2K Sports Free Game Show, sponsored by Kia. This is the NBA on 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson, happy to be here with my friends, and I mean that, my buddies, my pals, Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Tonight, it'll be the Sacramento Kings up against the Boston Celtics. Looking at Boston, they are clearly amped up for this one and determined to have a strong showing from the get-go. They feel this is a game they can win and want to establish that pace early on. We'll get a look at the UC Berkeley alum Jalen Brown tonight, another talented wingman from this year's class. What sets him apart, Kenny? Well, I was surprised that he actually came out this year. But, uh, you know, he, he's come into the league because he's physically ready. I mean, this guy has the body of Adonis. You know who Adonis is, right? Oh, yeah. The Greek god. I, I, that's one of my favorite characters. The Greek god of basketball. No question. But and physically, I, I think he's ready for it. Now it's just about, about being mentally prepared for the game. Well, let me tell you why I like uptown Jalen Brown. If he can get his jump a little more consistent, he can be an offensive machine. Because you know why? He has speed and strength. uh, That's a great combination, uh, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's why you brought it up. That does it for us. Thanks for tuning in. Uptown Brown. Sacramento, California, home for the Kings in an interconference basketball game here. Welcome, folks, and thanks for sharing part of your weekend with us here at 2K Sports. Alongside Chris Weber and Greg Anthony, I'm Kevin Harlan, the fourth member of our crew. From the sideline, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. And David Aldridge is standing by for our pregame report. David, good evening. Well, thank you, Kevin. Hey, this Celtics team has established defense as a key part of its identity. Coach Brad Stevens said, it's got to be our DNA. If it's not, we're in trouble. Forward Jay Crowder added, we play hard. Guys don't like that in this league. They want an easy, flowing game, but we play hard. Kevin? They've got some tough physical players, DA. They don't take plays off. And these teams both look to get out and run at every opportunity. Oh, that's right. They're fast breaking that open court basketball. Very much in favor in today's game. I mean, mm-hmm. it's fun to watch for the fans, too. Plenty of highlights. So fun. Let's get a nice clean game, huh? It'll be the Celtics off the tip. And now the opening lineup for Boston. Thomas is the point with Bradley into his side. Horford is out there with Johnson. And it's Crowder in at the three slot. Now here's Bradley. Six on the shot clock. Back to Thomas. Pulls up on the wing. Kept alive. Aflalo dishes to Cauley Stein. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Oh, and it's important for Kali Stein's confidence that he gets these interior shots to fall. The more he sees the ball go in, the more assured he will feel down inside. Now, here's Thomas in the corner. Bradley with it. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Thomas. And, and that's just carelessness there. I mean, you have got to have your head in the game. On defense, the Celtics. A follow outside. Cousins, no good. When he gets it that close to the basket, usually it's a sure flush. But the defense stepped up and stopped him cold in his tracks. Yeah, early on, three misses to open the game. Their offense right now still trying to find its way. Holly Stein in the post, guarded by Horford. A follow outside. Here's Cousins, and Horford pulls it down. 
The Celtics have gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. Thomas outside. Bangs home the trifecta. And, and you know, it took them a while to get going, but they finally connected now on their fourth shot of the game. Collison kicks to Coley Stein. Sacramento moving it around. Gay against Crowder. The drive by Gay. Can't cash in from the left block. The Celtics have gone just one of four to get this game started. Last season, Jay Crowder scored far and away the most points of his career, over 14 a game. Celtics is more of a secondary scorer, a spot-up shooter, and a good finisher at the rim. Austin's gone. One of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. Thomas with the ball. Horford high post. Shot from the top of the key. A shot off that time. Total breakdown on defense there, but fortunately he missed out. Gay, that's a two-pointer. Shot goes down. Very quick possession right there. Gay's got his first two points. Austin trailing. And for Crowder, Chris, he doesn't try to do too much offensively. As they say, he stays in his lane. <laughs> That's right. He shoots corner threes. He has a good sense of when to cut to the rim. And without being flashy, he's a very effective offensive player. And that's up-tempo basketball at its best. So much easier to operate the open court when a steal triggers the break. Now here's Collison. Here's Cousins. The rebound by Johnson. For Boston, they've gone just two of seven so far. A little bit of a slow start for them. They get the rebound. Crowder, the pass to Thomas. No good from the low block. Bradley against the Flalo. Cousins, and he lays it straight in. And when Cousins has some room to work with close to the basket, he knows how to deliver. Thomas against Collison. Thomas dishes to Horford. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. And for me, one of the more unsung players in the league, Al Horford, a two-time national champion at the University of Florida, one of the most skilled and versatile big men in our league, and, and he hasn't gotten the attention I believe he deserves. First free throw is good. And with Horford's free agency looming this last summer, Last season was a tricky spot for the Atlanta Hawks. Would they be able to keep him? Yeah, and, and you go back to the lack of exposure he's gotten. I mean, from the Dominican Republic, he, he's a Spanish-speaking star. I mean, his marketing and endorsement potential in bigger markets, something he is well aware of. No good on the second, so he hits one of two. Nice. Tying it up. Though a little disappointed that he couldn't give him the lead. Barnes kicks to Kufus. Pass to Caspi. In the corner, it's Temple. There's the pick. Expanding his range. Offensive rebound. Bucket is good. When he wasn't blocked out, he stayed with the play. You've got to love the effort. Austin's gone. Just one of four from three-point range here in the first. And here's Smart. Right wing. Olenek has the open look. Good, and Smart gets the assist. And that's the part of Horford's game that doesn't garner much attention. Great at setting screens to spring open his team. Outside Collison. He dishes it to Kufus. And the shot no good. A bit short. And Boston has possession. Now Smart. Quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. He sinks the 11-footer. And, and that's a great piece of work to get to the hoop there. Just tore the D to shreds. Kicks it to Temple. To the middle. Here's Caspi. And that one goes in as he is fouled. It'll be three points if he converts at the line. And look how gracefully Caspi is through the contact. Just bouncing off the defender and finishing off the bucket and stop. And McLemore, he's jacked in for Sacramento. 
and another disappointing season for the Kings last year. They fell out of the playoff race early on. They just couldn't keep pace with the rest of the conference. Free throw drops for Gasper. And while the Kings were improved last year, it didn't seem like they made much headway towards their ultimate goal. <laughs> well, right now, they seem to be lacking a direction for the team. There's an air of uncertainty about who they want to build around. They will need to answer some hard questions in a short time. And Olenek with the basket on the assist from Smart. And the lead goes right back. What a seesaw affair we've got going on. Well, that's because this is a very evenly matched game, and I would not be surprised if it comes down to a thrilling finish, too. Now, with Ben McLemore, you see a lot of the P word in this game, potential. He has a great frame to build up on at the shooting guard position. He has the skill set to be a do-it-all shooting guard. And with McLemore and his upside, you have to remember to be patient with this young player. Well, for scores like McLemore, it can be a tough adjustment in the NBA. He has shown that he can be a scoring threat in the league, but just needs more consistency. Eventually, everything might just fall into place for him. That free throw, no good. Ah, uh, the former Jayhawk McLemore, a gifted scorer who can really light it up in a hurry. Second free throw, no good. And for Ben McLemore, Chris, it hasn't been an easy start to his NBA career. Well, last year, he took a bit of a step back in terms of his impact on the floor. Less minutes played, less shots for him. His efficiency was still there, but it seems he has some work to do before he becomes a major part of an offense. That's his second person. The Kings have shot one of three from the line tonight, missing two earlier on. At the line for two. And he knocks down the first one. On during Cassie's career, he has seen his role improve. A dependable scorer who can flat out fill it up, especially from beyond the arc. Thomas checked in for Kelly Olenek. So he makes one of two as the second one misses. Boston's gone just one of four from three-point range here in the first. Here's Smart. Stand up, stand up. Picked by Horford. Here's Thomas. It's all tied in Sacramento. And don't go away. We'll be back with the action for the start of the second quarter in just a moment. And Celtics head coach Brad Stevens lured away from a very successful tenure with the Butler Bulldogs. He talked about the challenge of making that decision. The only hard part of that decision is leaving a place that you really loved for 13 years. I couldn't have left without knowing that it was a place that we were going to stay together and really commit to a process together. And I was sold on that, and I continue to be sold on it. I wonder if Coach Brad Stevens feels like he's recruiting another college class with all those draft picks lost in his stockpile. I, I know he's feeling real good about his decision. He's one of the bright coaching stars in our league. And so far, it's been a closely contested game as we get the second quarter up and going. And for the Kings guys, what jumps out to you, stats one? It's all about their defense. They have just done a terrific job of negating the timing and spacing of their opponent. Oh yeah, great communication. The guys are quick and rotating help and, and playing with a lot of energy. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups courtesy of Gatorade as the second quarter gets going. 
On the floor for Sacramento, Gay and Cauley Stein fill up the forward spots. Garrett Temple is out there with Ben McLemore and it's Cousins in at the five, roaming the paint. Here's Temple. He's guarded by Thomas. Temple, the pass to Cousins. And McLemore kicks to Gay. Crowder with the steal. And pushing it up, here's Boston. Bradley's got the ball. It's stolen by McLemore. And Temple kicks to Cauley Stein. And Cauley Stein throws it down. Wow. At seven feet tall, Cauley Stein is a major threat to throw it down. If he gets the ball close to the rim, the D is pretty much toast. Now here's Thomas. Five points in the game. Here's your rep go. DeMarcus Cousins comes up with the rebound. Guys, this offense very effective. And guys, the defense has been no match. They've just picked them apart. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, guys, it's always a transition and a difficult one for college coaches to come to the pros, but Celtics coach Brad Stevens made one of the smoothest we've seen after leading Butler to back-to-back -back national championship games. You hear that buzz from players to opposing coaches. Greg Popovich said, I really respect what he does. His team executes. I'll still watch his Butler tape. Trying to learn some stuff, to be honest with you. I praise indeed, fellas. And Popovich, really the godfather of the active coaches right now, D.A. His voice carries certainly a lot of weight in this league. Thank you. Well, one thing about Coach Brad Stevens, he's very composed on the side. He said it was a lesson he learned at Butler. If he gets rattled, the team does. So whether the game is going well or going poorly, you can't tell from looking at him. He keeps an even kid. Four on the clock. To end the drought. Got that one, and the Kings lead has been cut down to just four points with a bucket from Isaiah Thomas. Wow, and like all great scores, Thomas never phased by a little defensive pressure. They set the screen. Temple dishes the Cousins. Second shot opportunity. Temple the pass to McLemore. Just couldn't take the lid off. They had their chances, but came up empty. Now here's Brent, guarded by McLemore. Nice ball movement by Boston. Now the dish to Brent. And Johnson now top of the key. Right side, Thomas. Tries it from 19. That shot missing. Now Sacramento takes it the other way. And Stevens keeps that steady demeanor. But that doesn't mean, Chris, he won't get into players if he thinks they're not playing the right way. But even there, keeping that poker face helps. Players don't want to be embarrassed in front of thousands. As a coach, if you pull a player aside or keep it in the huddle, that's appreciated. You see him talking to a player and he looks cool and calm. But if you're a lip reader, it might be a different story. So the Celtics called timeout. They're first. And they've gotten good looks, you know. So that's one reason they're frustrated. Maybe he can come up with something to get them an easy one. Maybe get to the line. Well, I just think they're pressing too much. Not really in the rhythm. Have to let the game come to you. It's a completely new group on the floor for the Kings. So Boston going with almost an entire new group. El Horford's checked in for Johnson. Kelly Olynyk comes in for Eurebko. Brown is checked in for Crowder. And Smart subbed in for Bradley. And here in the second quarter of action as we approach four minutes played. Brown, good. Well, with a look at today's rosters, you'll see a veteran or two acting as a mentor on a team for young players. Chris, all teams want them. They need them for that balance. You've been on 
both ends of that relationship. Just how important is that for a young player? Uh, it is very important. You know, when you think about the word fear, fear mostly uh, is uh, what you anticipate about the unknown. And, and for a lot of young players, you know, they just don't know what to expect. They just don't know what habits to have. They just have never been in a situation before. And they're going to figure it out uh, regardless if anyone helps them or not. But just think about how it just helps the learning curve and how it speeds up the pace when you have someone that can tell you from their perspective uh, how to approach games or, or how to prepare for games, how to recover, uh, how to treat your body, uh, uh, how to play this guy. I know coach said this, but you might want to try this if that doesn't work. You know, and I think that's probably uh, one of the most underrated and depleted spaces on the team are, are guys that can be that third coach on the team, but with the jersey on. And so I think it's very important to have guys in those mentor type positions uh, just because uh, they've had to go through what these players are going through. Not just coach, but they've had to go through it and can tell it from a player's perspective. Great points. And Caspi for the Kings. Chris actually started with Sacramento when he was drafted to the NBA and after a brief jaunt around the league for a few years, returned to the Kings in 2014. Okay, look at what he's done. His best years have been in Sacramento. He's very good at getting out and running in the open floor and getting the crowd involved. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Outside Thomas. Green by Olenek. Stolen. Outside Collison. Nailed from three-point land. And now it's an eight-point Sacramento lead. Yeah, and they're shooting really starting to pick up here in the second. Picked by Horford. Thomas with the ball. Picked up by Collison. Horford, good. And even with the hand in his face, when Horford gets it in that close, he barely needs to see the rim to get it up and down. Thomas against Collison. Pass to Caspi. Unloads from 13. And the shot is long. Thomas gets a wide open look, and again, Boston with the triple. And the first half comes to a close. We've got a close game going on here. It's Sacramento leading by three. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thank you, Kevin. Here with Coach Dave Yeager. Coach, what is going to be the focus offensively going into the second half? Well, we try to go inside. You know, that's our strength anyways. And for us, you know, our bread is buttered inside, so we try to play high-low. And then if the threes come out of that, great, but we want to try to get everything to the rim. Coach, it all starts with that entry pass to the big, and then everybody plays off of him. Thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. Ernie Johnson, joined by Kenny Smith, right there. And Shaquille O'Neal, he's right there. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. A pretty close game for the Kings throughout the first quarter. Nothing seemed to give way on either side of the scoring column as they wrapped up the period all knotted up. They battled hard in the second quarter, and it was reflected on the scoreboard. What do you think about Sacramento, Kenny? Well, I think they're feeling the energy of this hometown crowd. Sometimes you get a little complacent and comfortable in your surroundings, but no, they fed off adrenaline in the first half. And Shaq, your thoughts on the Celtics? Well, I didn't even know who some of these guys were, but their bench came up with some big shots, gave the team a lift offensively. It's always possible those guys will see more minutes in the second half, but at the same time, you're a starter. You're a starter for a reason. We shall see, Ernie. And that'll do it, as the second half is just about ready to begin. Back to Kevin Harlan. We will see you after the game. Hey, watch yourself. Celebrating with the best. <laughs> A lot of action around, as always, the Capitol building tonight. We are in Sacramento, and we continue here on 2K Sports. Here we go now, the start of the third quarter, welcoming you back in a closely contested first half so far. 
Nice game. Great performance by Isaiah Thomas. Just a quality performance. And, you know, we do expect to see that from him. And he's always setting the bar high for himself. And sometimes I think we just kind of get numb to how good this guy really is. Uh, well, well, you know, success breeds confidence. You can see it in his body language. He believes in everything he's doing right now. Well, when you played, Chris, you were always viewed as one of the more heady players in the league along those lines. Who do you think are some of the smartest players in the NBA right now? Well, first of all, thank you for that compliment, Kevin. Right. And I would have to say, uh, you know, you have to look at guys like Chris Paul. Uh, I, I would say Draymond Green, Steph Curry. Uh, mm. uh, you know, and when I looked at uh, LeBron's IQ was just uh, just amazing at times. The way that he sees and controls the floor. So many good players. So many players I miss when you look at those point guards yes. out there in this league. But uh, uh, I'd have to say those guys. Like that. On the court right now for the Celtics. Thomas is the point with Bradley to his side. Jay Crowder out there with Amir Johnson. And it's Horford in the center blocking down the middle. The Kings shooting their sixth and seventh free throws in the game. First free throw is good. The one thing you have to appreciate about Rudy Gay is just how fearless he plays on the floor. He goes right at defenders and loves to finish with the dunk. He's very aggressive in every aspect of his game from offense to defense. Rudy Gay hits them both. And with Gay being so aggressive, Chris, with this play, you see it in all sorts of places, like his defense. Well, Kevin, perhaps the biggest place you'll see this fearless mindset is in late-game situations. He has hit a lot of late-game winners and clutch shots in his career. Not always perfect, but he is never afraid to take the last shot. Kings leading now by five. And on our sideline, our reporter, David Aldridge. Guys, you look around the league and the post-up is giving way to more and more pick and rolls, more and more three-point shooting. Some big men don't like it, but Amir Johnson embraces the change. He said, it's what I do. I'm a big that likes to set screens and roll. Kevin, with his combination of range and finishing inside, has become one of the best at it in the game. Very efficient, D.A., thanks. Here's a follow after the made shot from Jay Crowder. Crawley Stein kicks to Gay. Collison up top. He's guarded by Thomas. Collison dishes to Cousins. Rebounded by the Celtics. And stolen by Cousins. Holly Stein. It's good on the footback. Oh, man. The relentless pursuit of the basketball by Collie Stein. Just a tremendous hustler on the offensive glass. Picked by Horford. The pass to Johnson. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Now, when you think about Amir Johnson, the last ever prep to pro draft team. Now, look, he was taken out of high school with the 56th pick by the Pistons back in 2005. Learning from the vets on that squad, he learned how to win. Sacramento making a switch here. McLemore is checked in. And we're not used to thinking of 11-year vets still having room to grow. But you know what, Chris? That might be the case with Amir Johnson. Well, it's interesting. I played with Amir. Always a great athlete with high energy, great motor. But he's never averaged more than 28 minutes a game despite being that highly effective player. That could mean he's had a lot of tread left on those tires. Now, Willie Cauley Stein was considered a bit of a reach for his draft position. But you have to love how he plays at his size. Very active inside with his feet to flash open on cuts. Just shows great awareness for a new player. Here's Thomas following the basket by DeMarcus Cousins. Johnson with a screen on Collins. Bradley, no one around him. No good on the triple. And that's the battle they haven't been winning today. Their work on the glass has been porous, and that's got to change. Well, you hate to use the P word, potential, but you can't help but do it with Willie Cauley Stein. You're right, Kev. I hate the word potential as well. It just means unrealized talent. As long as he moves as well as he does with his size, he'll be fine. Now, here's Collison. Holding the miss by Avery Bradley. 
The basket counts and one. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it a three-point play. Big boy strength right there, Kevin. Big boy move from Cousins right there. He feasts off of contact when he's coming up with a shot. And the Kings making a change here. Temple's checked in. Boston also with the sub. Yurebko's checked in for Al Horford. The Kings have converted four of seven free throws on the night. And a season ago, only converting at about a 72% clip from the line. Now here's Johnson. Unloads from 13. Nice D from Cousins. Uh, they are a lousy one for five for the half. They need to find a way to get it going. They get it again. Crawley Stein kicks to Temple. Some nice ball movement here by the Kings. Outside Collison. Back to Cousins. Shot clock at five. Temple. Again, the miss by the King. Celtics trail by nine. Outside Thomas. Third quarter of basketball here in just a little under three and a half minutes gone by. There's the screen. Fires for three. They grab their own miss. Yarebko can't get it to go. He's usually very dependable from that range, but the D got themselves in that play and got him off kill. Cousins, no one around him. Here's Cauley Stein. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. And Thomas has it in the corner. That doesn't go either for Thomas. Oh, Kevin, he positioned himself perfectly and had all the room to drop that one in. Just couldn't get it to go. Collison against Johnson. And Cousins kicks to Collison. And that one hits back iron. Celtics trail by nine. And the Celtics with a time-tested tempo. Stock up on tough defenders, Chris, and find just enough offense to get the job done. Well, and a score like Isaiah Thomas can really move that needle for you. But you're so right. So many talent evaluators, they just get infatuated with scoring. But when you start by looking for defenders, I think you're closer to a winning rest. So just look, now with Cousins, we see him becoming that player everyone hoped he would become when he entered the league. It's strange to think he was taken fifth overall in his draft, given his skill set. You would think a lot of GMs would want that duo. He's gone one of one in the game so far from the line. And he hit 72% of his foul shots a season ago, but I'm not sure he's real thrilled with those numbers. And for Cousins, certainly he will end up being one of the best players in the league out of that uh, 2010 draft. He's one of the best big men in the game, and his skills on the court have never been questioned. But his antics on the court have been, and that's what dropped his draft position. He can butt heads with his coach at times and doesn't hide any contention. This happened often enough in his career that he has to accept part of the blame for it. Wasted no time on that one. And it's eight points for Jalen Brown. Oh, you love to see Brown knock down the three ball, showing great strides and improving his range. And McLemore kicks to Cousins to the inside. And that one, good. And the Kings lead by seven. I like it. Aggressive. They're pounding it inside. Unwilling to settle for less. Smart kicks to Yarebko. Good, and Smart gets the assist. Smart's got six assists in the game. They didn't have much of a problem getting the ball into the post that time. McLemore, the pass to Cousins. McLemore dishes to Temple. Cousins inside. He's against Olenek. McLemore releases from the wing and drills it. That's the kind of player McLemore is. He is always thinking of shooting as soon as he gets the ball off the pass. Screen by Olenek. To the middle. Count that one, and the Kings lead has been cut down to five on the bucket from Yarebko. They are just killing him on the interior. Cousins inside. Olenek is covering. Cousins with the bucket. Cousins has got 14. Well, he's picking his spots. Understanding the game so well helps them fuel this lead. Now here's Smart. Inside and stolen by Cousins. He can't hit that time. And we've reached the end of the third. 
Kings lead by seven. Live from Golden One Center, you're watching 2K Sports. Now let's listen into the huddle of Brad Stevens. Pace of play is a big part of tonight, okay? Make sure on the bench when we come back, we lift it. We lift it. One of the team's great young teachers, Brad Stevens, wanting his guys to control the tempo. Yeah, and he feels if they push it, if they attack intelligently, it's going to be to their advantage. The fourth quarter just moments away now as we welcome you back. Collison is out there with a flower. Then there's Rudy Gay. Then there's Kufus. And it's Barnes in a power forward position. So that's the five in the game for Sacramento. Now here's Brad. And the three ball is good. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Gay kicks to Kufus. A follow with it. Now guarded by Brad. A follow dishes to Gay. A fadeaway. Offensive rebound. A follow. That's good. And, the, and they're controlling the boards, Kevin. That's plus five in that category. Smart with the ball. Stolen by Collison. Fourth quarter just getting started. One minute in the books. Wasted no time on that one. And the Kings lead by nine. He might not have the long range ability of some other guys, but he will knock down open ones like that. Smart kick still in it. A kick out to Brown. Screen by Olenek. Horford the pass to Brown. No good from outside. I can't believe he missed that one. I thought for sure that was good. Outside Collison. Passes it to Barnes. Second chance shot. A nice shot by Kufus. He does not play the score. I mean, he's going to continue to work his tail off on the glass and make plays just like that. Keep it simple, know yourself, and that's how he gets his minutes. He doesn't stop battling for rebounds even when the score is lopsided. He knows his role. And Costa Cooper is such a valuable player to have off the bench for a team, Chris. Gives you spacing and size and really knows how to play within himself. Well, Kev, Cooper is usually productive in whatever role he's playing for a team. His versatility to start or to be the first big off the bench is really what makes him valuable. Stein, he's checked in for Costa Cufas. The Celtics also changing it up. Johnson comes in for Kelly Olynyk, and Thomas subbed in for Brown. Okay, well, let's check in with David Aldridge, who's reporting from the sidelines. Hey, guys. Well, I was able to listen in on what Brad Stevens was talking about with his players. He told them flat out, we are turning the ball over too much, guys. We can't keep making the hero ball play. Slow it down, run the offense, and make the safe pass. Back to you, Kevin. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. Celtics trail by 13. Outside Bradley. Johnson the screen. The three from Thomas. Cauley Stein grabs the board. Cauley Stein's got nine rebounds now tonight. They have been board dominant in this game. That's definitely been a factor in crafting this huge lead. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. Johnson with a screen on Barnes. Barnes against Thomas. Shot clock at six. Here's Smart. 
Here's Horford. Lays it up, and despite of the excellent defense at that. Well, you can't forget about Horford. I mean, carving out space inside for the putback. Sacramento leading by 13. And here is Cauley Stein. Collison dishes to Gay. Shoots from 12. No good off the front iron. Oh, he hasn't started this game on the right foot, but it hasn't slowed his team from grabbing the lead. Chris, you're a Detroit product through and through. Grew up in the area and played for the University of Michigan. Did growing up in Detroit impact at all how you played the game? Oh, man, definitely. You know, uh, growing up on the west side of Detroit, I just, you know, we everybody in Detroit is a Pistons fan. So, uh, number one, uh, that, that influenced me a big time. It's, it's funny, Isaiah was my favorite player, and after he won the MVP a couple of times, he would always say, hi, mom, hey, mom, hi, mom. So that's why after every game, I actually did it and was influenced that way. And Chuck Daly, uh, he was a mentor uh, to me. Uh, he knew me uh, in high school, but uh, as I grew older, uh, his relationship meant a lot to me. So I can't thank, uh, you know, Isaiah and, and, and Rick Mahorn. Uh, you know, I, I met those guys in high school. I can't thank them enough for their positive influence on me. Guys like John Sally and, and, and of course, Joe Dumas. So, uh, play for other teams, but uh, as a fan, I always grew up a Pistons fan. Like that. Here's Collison after the basket by Boston. Here's Cousins. Cousins with another miss. The bat would have been lucky had it fallen four shot selection. Well, that's just not wise to take that shot in that situation. We'll think better of it next time around. Beautiful execution in terms of creating space for his shot. He just couldn't get that one to fall. Collison against Thomas. Collison kicks to Cauley Stein. And pushing it up. Here's Boston. Here's Bradley. Feeds to Horford. He tries for three. It's hauled in by Gay. Gay's got four rebounds in this game. Kings leading now by 11. And, and we'll just watch the clock wind down, guys, in what will turn out to be a win here for Sacramento. This is a game where the defense, you know, steals specifically generating a lot of opportunities and it created possessions for them scoring opportunities and that effort a big part of what will be a nice victory here tonight and as we've come to expect another big game tonight and an impressive exhibit for demarcus cousins well, look he made the tough shots he made the easy shots he made all the shots it was an offensive showcase for him tonight he's the reason they're going to run away with this win Now Collison. He feeds it to Gay. Screen by Cousins. Pulls from the top of the key. And again, it's Sacramento converted. I don't want to say they're trying to run up the score here, but they do keep adding to the lead. <laughs> well, what are you asking? Maybe they should let up a little, right? This is just brutal to watch. Bradley kicks to Johnson. Here's Horford. Boston again missing. And so it's Sacramento easily grabbing this one. And the outcome of this one was never in doubt. And boy, they really put in a supreme effort. Uh, it just felt like once they had that lead and it was comfortable, they were not going to relinquish it. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks very much, Rudy. Congrats on the win. What was working for you on offense tonight? Um, you know, I think our defense kind of got our offense into it. You know, we're that kind of team. Our defense makes our offense. We, we run the floor and we, and we share the ball. So um, whenever we out there playing defense like we did today, we usually are in a good position. Great performance tonight, Rudy. Congrats on the win. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA, presented by 2K Sports. And we'll see you next time. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Thank you, Kevin. Now we move on to our Jordan player of the game, DeMarcus Cousins. He's their go-to guy for a reason. You saw exactly why tonight. Just another memorable performance from one of the game's best players. 
I don't think anyone has come as far since entering the league as DeMarcus has. Uh, tonight, we saw what a force he's become in the low post. He got all the moves, got the attitude, just a tremendous competitor. And he's got cool hair, too. Not that I'm looking, but it just looks pretty cool. I can't say enough about the contribution he made defensively. Specifically, his on-ball defense was outstanding. He blew up a lot of plays by getting his hand in there and coming away with a steal. And that aggressive D of his helped guide them to this win. And that's it for tonight. But we've got a whole new NBA season ahead of us. For Shaquille O'Neal, for Kenny the Jet Smith, for Kevin Harlan, wherever he might be, and the entire 2K Sports crew, I'm Ernie Johnson. We'll see you again very soon.